there are very few characters that can match the ability to hold a fight as well as a Yabeneth can. Here we're going to be able to see the Yabeneth start off the fights with the Malak. That is your 1-2 front line. Then from the back line, you can have that Quick Knight dive in, find value, and you'll have hovering, not just the Valheim, but also the Liliana. I actually really like this adaptation. I was thinking, oh, they're going to be a little bit squishy, blah, 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 but no, I think that this Yabeneth is the perfect little response here at the end. Rourke would do a pretty good job of shredding down this front line, though, and Cricknack doesn't do super well. Cricknack has a very bad time into yeah. Rourke. You dive in, he lands the stun, your combo is now gone, and he's got full chip burst, which is hard. That's... Who does first one kill here? I mean, it it should be the Alice, <laughs> it should be the Raz, it should be the Omen. Omen late game is not going to happen. No. Raz is a skill matchup, and the Raz, especially on a player as good as Star, probably, uh, he'll work out how to stay ahead. So I guess the Alice, I guess we're talking Alice, and then of course, both the Rourke and the Crick Dunk have a similar vulnerability. Before being reached now for first one, going Ooh. in onto Yuzon on in the top lane, it's a lot of damage with the death spec and bring him right back in. But that was an interesting committal right there. Yeah, and not having that, I mean, is there is this change of the jungle items were, were pretty substantial. Uh, last Death's time. embrace. Death's embrace on the first one, though, with the combination of that nature's realm. Beautifully done. It is Yuzon who will actually fall, though. I mean, it was Benny's fault. Yuzon just shouldn't have run towards the tower. I mean, I feel like that's a discussion for another day as the fight breaks out in the jungle all over this Mike Golem trying to force themselves or get themselves back out. His Alpha Red NT is going to target. The follow-up is there. Again, Yuzon team. Yeah. catches him in a Death's Embrace. He'll be almost as threatening as Malak towards the leg game. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that for sure, how tanky he is going to get, as well as being nimble in these fights. First one going in, Ooh. trying to steal at this dragon, but it still has a little bit of HP to work with on the flank. NT is going to go in there, pick up the kill. Shadow is juking, dodging, and diving. And what a beautiful steal from Alpha Red. NT sweep through, pick Ooh, up Benny. webs. And now Benny should be another free pick. Stars through, but NT's got enough zone for him to. Not respecting the early destroyed. game damage of NT so far. That's why he's going to be the target of this next gank. But the um Predictable to get him on. Oh, the dodge there! A star goes on him. This is worst one with the counter kill. The reinitiation cast stays there. He's going to try and find the redwood rush. The branching out to resecure. This is Neil is going down. The sustained damage from first one is there. As Benny is going to be the potential next target. The stun does not connect. That was massive. This could be it. There's the slow. The fall of the branching out is like they're going to burn the flicker as well. Go and get it. Yes, they do. His capacity. If you just watch how much he bobs and weaves in the fights, it's scary. It is indeed. We're seeing another gank up here. A scary situation now for Shadow, who's trying to survive through with the Gleave. The rest of the team is going to collapse on this. They're the ward. They're the one that sits there in the bush. They're the one that keeps up the pressure. But now, speaking of pressure, the Dark Slayer is under threat. His first one forced a drone drop out. KSSA is in a rough spot. His stars on the flank. Nice in the pick was there. The shock trying to go on in. The Dark Slayer will reset on the back. This is the Gleave. The follow-up is there. But they found the Valheim. Nicely done. The Death's Embrace onto Shadow as well. He is stuck in a terrible situation. As NT goes back in the Ghost Rock to try and reinitiate off the back. This though wins. Taking a lot of damage. The sun is there. The shield enough to keep Shadow alive for now. Dark Slayer was threatened by first one. Shadow will be in trouble, but KSSA is there with the Nature's Realm. That's quite good with the shot coming through as well. Two members of J Team have already fallen. Nicely done. The Dark Blessing was not enough to keep them alive as the Marsh is trying to chase down Chow's not able to do so. Already burned the key ultimate. Shadow lived! That heal timing was so. Coming into the 18 minute mark, as Shadow has found himself some friends here on the other side of the map. First one's gonna look to try and go in on this now. The Shocked looking to re engage Taos and crew on the flank, but Yuzon is the target. He is getting chunked down. The Hissy to try and keep him alive just a little bit longer. It is Neil taking up first one on the flank. Nice split throughout this fight. It is NT, the next target, dodging in and out of the bush. Up against Neil, the Reiki shot, not enough to take him down. Benny as well, getting oh so low, but the key damage dealers have been killed for Alpha Red. It is now J Team in full control as Taos is the next one to fall. No, a little bit longer. He finally does. Fight so cleverly. They never actually took a full 5v5. Instead, they took several stagger fights. And that will work out well as they now threaten the core. And they now just go on in. We're watching the replay, and they're winning the game. Beautiful play there as J Team takes game number one. But the big thing with Zill is he needs early game scale. It's not really effective until that mid late game. Same, I would say, with Elsu. This is a risky draft from J Team. They have this strong, static backliner. A lot of dive and no initiation. Front. They have no real tanky frontliner to keep this backliner alive. And you have a good amount of tanky frontline. He should. Oh, the snipe dodge as well. Nicely done. KSSA might have given his life for this, though. One more auto will secure the kill and wins. Watch it. 
It's a tricky middle ground to find. Is here in the mid. Shadow is going in. That red stallion, the follow ups going to be there. The flicker, the oh. middle. The arcade Nova and T obliterates the front line. Now KSSA has lined them up. And we do see the Nature's Realm going in. Neo being pulled back once again. The lethal razor there. <laughs> I love KSSA. The Zill goes in. He's like, no, get back, get away. We do oh, see the Camino there with the deaths. Ah, uh, no, that was the collapse they absolutely needed. Now, the Camino going in on to first one. Nicely done, but Neil not quite able to execute the kill. That is going to be Star. The follow-up is there from the Raz. Beautifully done. And KSSA, the next target, the follow-up. But all the while, NT with the lethal raise. He misses the key spell, though. His shadow is trying to get this additional kill on him, but he will be able to do so. But it now is the 1v1 scenario, and Wins walks away on top. Because the damage is bound. Keep in mind, though, TJ, that was a 5v4 situation. Oh, but Tao's picking the wrong bush to back in. KSS is he? there with the potential steal. Did he? Did he, though? I might be a little bit wrong. I might have spoke a little too soon because KSSA, the best support in the world, is there to keep him alive. All right. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Keeping an eye out there as well as the snipes do come on through. The Lubu is split pushing in two lanes. KSSA using their tried and true combo to push down this high ground tower using Nature's Realm to zone. But Shadow has gone and committed on the flank. Doesn't get back over the wall though. That's a crucial misstep as the Nature uh, as he actually gets locked in with the Death's Embrace. But look at the damage going in. That Marja is doing work. But Tao's on the return. They're going on through. The Zill was there. And that was some crucial deaths there for Alpha Red. And it's worked extraordinarily well previously for Yuzon. There's not a whole lot that wins could do when a whole bunch of players arrived. Speaking oh. of, oh, speaking That's of a arriving, big kill. that is going to be a nice, solid trade there for J Team up in the top lane as well. Shadow and Yuzon, the battle is alive right now. But Neil and First One have both joined. So it's a two v two situation. Neil needs to try and survive a little bit longer, but in an instant. Yuzon does go down. A little bit of a misplay from him here again. The flicker! He goes on in, he finds the branching out, and they find Benny in the bush. The snipe goes on through, and it does literally nothing. Beautifully done. Now Star and the rest of uh -oh. JC just need to play back. This could be game. Sure, you're scaling well, but Alpha Red won your final tower. They do indeed, and they have a minion wave with which to claim it. This could be the moment the high ground tower falls. All three are down, which means that J Team are in a terrible position. I think they know that's going to be it. And Alpha Red will take game number two. That is going to be GG. They tie up this series. A little bit spicier than perhaps they'd hoped in that late game. Interesting. Or do we go for an obvious uh, Mina draft into an assassin? But they felt that their side lane was more important to keep him because it might be this Elsu. Yes. I don't agree with that because the hard counter to the Elsu has already been drafted. The Grack is already on the cards. Whether or not you feel comfortable playing into a Grack as an Elsu is entirely in your hands. And I feel J Team kind of bungled the draft by letting that uh, support pick be dictated early. A chain, a hook has an ability to win you a game. Yeah. And that's the power of Grack. Also, yeah. want to note, Valheim is actually aligning this Elsu at this stage in the game. And uh, the Elsu's playing behind Tower. Oh. oh! Stark contrast to previous games where Alpha Red were able to dominate the early oh. game. Oh! Maybe not! They very aggressively clear top wave as well to make sure that there's no way. Oh, that's a good dark to Minion! That was absolutely stellar. The Death Scythe into the dark to Minion. on baiting them right back in. Two clean kills! In particular. <sighs> Benny will now be looking for more. This time he'll be pulled in by KSSA. Lap the Dark Dominion just for the heck of it as the damage comes through strongly. We're keeping an eye on him all game long. Yuzon needs to be careful though. His Taos is going in, finds himself he in the Death's these. Embrace. But yeah, Yuzon is not necessarily in a great position. Here's the rest of the backup is in position. But now first one has committed way too much and Taos, the rest of the team is there. The lethal rays in the back, are they gonna be enough? Not quite. Again, there's a lot on the line. 250,000 US dollars for that first place prize. The combo Benny. does go through on this, but Benny is so tanky. Takes a little bit longer to live, but finally we see the combo executed here for Alpha Red. Giving Violet just enough HP to be able to extricate himself from that situation. It's a Dark Slayer now being picked up with ease for J Team. That's another buff they're going to have as well. Stray. Oh, first one! In a terrible position, the lethal rays in the back through all this door do so much work, but we do have the flank wave use on the Death's Embrace, finding a KSSA, then a kill on the Grack, and that is two clean kills, putting them in a terrible position because they are so afraid of this Elsu because he is starting to hit his peak. 
We do see once again the Metamorphosis going in with the Death's Embrace on the Tau, securing the kill onto that critical Valheim that's going to be damage they don't have to secure this win. And right now, it looks like a terrible position for Alpha Red, pushing it onto the core is J-Team. They have the minions, they have the damage, and that is going to be it. GG, game number three goes to JT. I think the Marja is not a bad pickup here. It gives no. them additional layer of damage, more consistency. Um, one thing I would say, the Marja, they'll, they'll need to run Xenial uh, into Valheim because Valheim's actually a pretty good counter to the Xenial. It's got good lane pressure. If the Xenial leaves lane, the tower can be taken. And it's difficult to Angelic Splendor with the uh, click and point stun that uh, Valheim does have. Now we know he, we know can. he can. We know he can. KSSA is and that is absolutely wild. It is insanely good. The main goes down. And we are able to get that first uh, pick up there. Neil as well is going to fall. Alpha Red looking very, very good in this fight. The Angelic Splendor coming in, keeping the shield, keeping the HP alive. Star is there on the flank, and NG is being chased down by Benny. The return damage coming out from Alpha Red is there. I uh, do kind of spike in that mid lane. The characters that will do best towards the late game are going to be the Malak and the Xenial. The two side lanes. That gives them. Oh! Sorry to cut you off there. You're talking about our side lanes, and uh, we're seeing exactly what you're talking about being put in action, TJ. They won't, but oh, KSSA forced to use the Flicker and the Hurricane Wall to escape. Took so much damage from this Abyssal Dragon to start things off. Neil is going to fall, but now Star. Alpha Red have put themselves in such a terrible position that they have put themselves so far out. Shadow and First One are forced in right now, trying to turn back around on this Abyssal Dragon. First One's actually using this to lifesteal back up. The rest of J Team are joining in the party as Shadow is in a terrible position. He's going to have to use the Malleus to get himself out. Actually, not even necessarily needed. Oh, brought him right back down. Building a little more damage as well. As Winds needs to be cautious as the Chain CC is there. He does have the Ghost Walk, but it's not going to be able to solve. Oh, the dodge. The Flicker, can he survive? A couple more autos. <gasps> my Wins! goodness. Winds, no. Winds, you're not allowed to do this. That's unfair. What on earth was that? Even though he doesn't die, it still counts as a trade because he has to recall. Go back to base or farm up in jungle. He'll opt for the latter, focusing in on the Spirit Sentinel. That's a pretty good call right there. As Taos is going in, trying to clear the wave, doing a little bit of poke damage on the oh, first one. But first one's now in a very tough position. However, the counter kill goes on into Star. At the back of the Nature's Realm is now Benny up against the, all of her, you know, all the abilities that she's going to be able to throw at them. The Spirit's just chunking right on through, but a nice wind oh, cuffs. Finding God. Benny and deleting him in an instant. There's the shock in the back as well as Taos is going in. Nice hurricane wall to try and split the fight from KSSA, which means the tower is going to be taken out in an instant. As first one pushes right on through, and they have a minion to work with here. So now all three high ground towers are exposed. A clean tower tag from Alpha Red. More than anything else, they find a pick onto Benny, isolate him, and then follow through using the hurricane wall excellently. Now first one continues Whoa. on to Neil. He's got the life steal. He's got himself the kill. Going from one lane to another in an instant. And now the shock of the mid was worth the fall. The perfect CC on to use on. He's able to flicker up, get himself out. But on the side, wins is going to be the target. Not able to get himself out with the ghost walk. And now the tower under threat. The high ground is here as Alpha Red is pushing in onto the high ground. They have the kills. That's one tower. They're going to look to make it two. And they'll look for much more than just the high grounds. This is their massive gold lead, their peak activation. There's no need to go late game, they say. They'll take this here and now. Benny going in, trying to split the fight, but being pushed out in his own right by the Hurricane Wall. Can't say it's getting oh so low, but the shock is there on the flank. Star trying to clean up all these kills, but he's not going to be able to do so. Already used an unpredictable, and on the back of it, the Morin has the damage. Alpha Red ties up the series. We're going to game number five. Nice. That's why you're, that's why you're up here, buddy. Ooh. <laughs> I may have, I think I jinxed it. That's a caster curse in full effect right there. Ooh. A slips bowl. could be interesting. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't like, I don't like the slips. Uh, I might like the... I don't, I don't like any of these options, because if you go range DPS, you now have absolutely no front line. No, literally and none. And you have absolutely no way to get to the Morin. And we've yeah. seen what happens when they play games and don't have an ability to get to the Morin. The Morin just rolls through the fights and cleans them up. I think the Zephyrus is the call. I think the Death from Above is going to be hugely impactful here, combining that with the Hissy Fit, with the Sunshine, with the Blinding Light, with everything. Having said that, I favor Alpha Red. Absolutely, I agree. I like their drafts a little bit better here. After seeing that Morn in the last game, after seeing the first one get power farmed, like we have not seen a dwarf since the Mines of Moria, I feel like, don't look at me like that. And I, I feel like, you know, he's just he's just too good to deny. Doing a very good job, 1.8, 1.6 respectively, but already pulling out ahead. You have to keep an eye on first one. Yep. Keep an eye on his gold. He's at it double the opponent's gold the entire game one. See if he can hit that metric again, game two. 
He's turning to get his build online, he's looking towards the Missile Dragon as well. Wins here on the flank, gonna try and snipe this out, but no. First one is there. Nice job with the punish timing. But just like that, he already has doubled the gold of the support of Hoskin. Not necessarily the best, but significant. Use all in trouble. Use That's a good push. The last seed lands. Connects, get this done under the tower off the back. It will indeed. They're going in though. Popping the ults. Not able to pick up a kill. Nature's Realm on the flank is theirs. Oh, we have NT looking for the flank. He's able to get the uppercut. The pushback, the double kill. And now does on out on an island. Neil is going to try and go with the death from above fall, but he's going to a kill of his own. And the follow-up damage from Neil, wiping the whole team. The only hope is again, look at the farm concentration over onto first one. He's still hit, sitting at 5,000 gold. He is, but the rest of his team is paying for it. Is that there's another kill going over towards J Team? They have hit this mid-game activation. Oh, when you they are looking oh so solid. Very smartly backing out. Desperate plays actually from Alvara. <gasps> oh, and now it is first one in a terrible position. He's again the life steal to get on through KS say the perfect one to help keep him alive. The nature strong with their first one. No! Oh! The snipe going through from Wins. Benny with the sunshine. That was absolutely wild. Wins just barely lands enough stuns, and well, that's the damage, the cycle, the damage focus from J Team in their favor. Three ten minute mark. That Ouch. is not impossible to come back from, but remember we highlighted J Team as the better late game composition. I don't think that's changed, and I worry Alpha Red may be in trouble. Well, they're looking certainly very much in trouble right now. The speed boost that this Alice is offering is first one. with these rotations. There's Neil pushed back into the stun. First one just trying to escape as the hissy fit is there. Neil still chasing down this kill. The sun will connect, and the chain from wins as well. That is still pretty significant. That puts them ahead of almost everyone, save for the opposing jungle and Neil. Well, they've been also doing a very good job of power farming. He's an 8k gold himself. Shadow walking into the wrong bush. I don't care how fast you are, Omen. You're not fast enough to escape the hunter. That is Richter. Did you see the maneuverability there of Benny? He shrugs off the focus, Ooh. then drops it. Hissy fit for a double kill. J Team looking to go in onto the high ground. Taos is going to be there. The Hissy fit doing so much additional damage. Look how Wins takes down this tower as one falls in the low ground as well. This could actually very well be the game right here as J Team is pushing in the shock to try and clear the minion wave. But Taos is there. He's going to fall. This is looking like it's going to be it for J Team. This is peak, j -Zim. You make one mistake, and they keep rolling that boulder downhill. Now they need to hold one high ground remaining, four players up. Well, make it three as KSSA is instantly gone. First one trying to power on through, use the push back into the high ground. That is going to be the stun, and that's the follow up. That is going to be it. That's the full wipe as J-Team take it five, all five games. Beautiful play from them.